Platonic dualism. The text refers to it as a convincing lie. What makes Platonic dualism so convincing is that it does bear some resemblance to the truth. Plato viewed the world in terms of unchanging, eternal, perfect ideals that stood in contrast to changing, temporal, and imperfect things that came and went with the passage of time. He referred to the physical, temporal things in life as matter and the eternal ideals as forms. Plato viewed the temporal world of matter as inferior to the eternal world of forms. The material world consisted only of temporary and imperfect shadows of the perfect ideals which lie above and beyond. While it is true that there is a difference between eternal and temporal things, the Bible tells us Christ made them both. Yes, some things are temporal and some things are eternal, but Jesus is Lord of all, both the visible and the invisible, the temporal and the eternal. It is all His. He owns it all, and He sustains it all. Yes, some things are temporal and pass away, while other things are eternal and never decay. And it's true that it's vain to live your life for the pursuit of material things, but does this mean that temporal things do not have real significance? Does this mean that only eternal things have true value? The eternal world is not a place to which we escape, and the body is not the prison of the soul, as Plato spoke of it. Here's an important biblical truth. We do live in a fallen world, which is not the way it was originally made to be, but we do not live in a forsaken world. God, who made the world and everything in it, gives to all life, breath, and all things in Him we live and move and have our being. Right now. God is holding your body together as you watch this animation. And your physical body is part of God's good creation. And God has not abandoned His creation. Psalm 24, 1 tells us, The earth and everything in it remains God's own possession. Therefore, it has great significance. The historical outcome of Plato's double-decker bus idea created a disastrous gap between the temporal and the eternal realm, and between the physical and the spiritual realm. This gap is unbiblical. Both realms are God's realms. The Bible does not devalue the physical world, quite the opposite. We are called to engage directly in the physical world through work. Interaction with the physical world in the form of work is a good and honorable thing, especially when done heartily as unto the Lord. In this regard, work can be worship. When we do our work in this temporal, physical, imperfect world, we are actually engaging in the very intention that God had in mind for human beings before He ever created Adam and Eve. How can we know what intention God actually had in mind for humans before He made Adam and Eve? It's not so difficult. We can read about it in Genesis 1, verses 26 through 28, where His intention for human beings is spelled out right there in black and white. Quote, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over all the earth. End quote. God's clear intention for human beings was that we would govern over all of creation, the fish, the birds, the plants, the entire earth. The fact is, you and I were created to be earth tenders. This is the role and function God had in mind when He created us in His likeness and image. It's God's order of things. The first commission given by God to humans is to govern over all the earth. Here's the big problem with Platonic dualism. It keeps many sincere Christians from feeling great about engaging with this physical, temporal world. Many of us see our work with temporal things as a colossal waste of time. We see eternity as having real import. We see pastors and missionaries doing the real work of God because they're dealing with eternal matters of the soul. This mixture of Platonism with Christianity eventually led to a religious dualism 
in which all of life was divided into higher and lower realms. Today we call the upper realm the sacred, and things in the lower realm the secular. In the realm of the sacred, people put going to church or listening to a sermon. In the realm of the secular, people will put things pertaining to the physical and temporal realm of human affairs, like baking a pie. But we need to think again about this faulty big picture. Could it be a mental trap? Ask yourself, is there any part of life not related to the creator and the sustainer of all things, whether temporal or eternal? Are there any aspects of the physical creation that exist independently of God, somehow on its own, divorced from his ownership, his interest, or his care? And where exactly is this so-called secular world anyway? Fact is, it doesn't exist. Yet we have talked about it for so long, we think it's really there. Most of us are infected by this SSD, the mental condition that gives credence to the secular-sacred divide. One of the purposes of this course is to help us think differently about all of this and to view our work in this temporal world through a much different lens. The answer to the problem of SSD is to replace it. Replace the upper-lower idea with a right-left idea. The right-left idea looks like this. You can list every endeavor known to humanity in the center of the circle from business, education, and law, to medicine and media. Any one of these endeavors can either be done in harmony with God's design, fulfilling His will, in line with the kingdom of light or good, or we can work in conflict with God's design, contrary to His will, in line with the domain of darkness or evil. John Beckett chose to intentionally align his business policies with God's design. But that same business could also be done in a way that conflicts with the design of God. It works the same for art, or sports, or politics, or anything else humans do in this temporal world. The bottom line is, God purposes to do His will on earth as it is in heaven, and by His grace He will work through redeemed people to bring His light to every sphere of life. It's about the here and now as well as eternity. We don't have to wait to help bring meaning to all kinds of work in the temporal world and to experience God's pleasure in it. You will be introduced to some practical tools that will help connect everyday work to the bigger picture of God's purpose and design for the things He has made and to see your role in that big picture more clearly. Thank you.